Hello everyone, I'm Tim from Tim's PC and I build custom PCs to suit anyone's needs or budget. I also live stream my builds and repairs for transparency and educational purposes. So if you would like to get an awesome new PC, you'd like to see it put together live, send me a message today. Alright, so I know I promised you a, a much cooler PC on tonight. I've just been held back a bit. I was going to be doing two PCs tonight. We're going to do this one first and then we're going to do marks later on. But it looks like we'll be doing marks tomorrow night. So I've just been, like I said, just been held back family stuff um, tonight. So yeah, let's get started with this one. So we're going to be building Philip's PC here. So. Philip is is a friend of a couple of my other customers who have bought PCs for me recently and he was like, "Oh, I really want to get something like that, but he didn't have the he didn't have the same sort of budget as as his friends did." So, put together this build for him. So, it's it's going to look all right with the with the RGB lighting and all that. Um but it, it's going to be fine. Yeah. And it's the sort of build where Basically, Philip will be able to add a graphics card to this when he gets a bit more money, and it's going to mean a massive performance upgrade for him. And it's not money down the drain, so he's got we've got the Cooler Master Master Watt 650 watt power supply with the five year warranty. We've got the Ryzen 5600G CPU. We've got 16 gigabytes of 3200 megahertz CL16 memory. We've got a 500 gigabyte NVMe SSD, a one terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive, and we've got this board here, the Gigabyte UDA520MH motherboard with an M2 slot there. So this is a pretty good like price performance build, I guess you could say. Um, can't really, can't really do much better than this these days because there's just not a lot of budget graphics cards to choose from so you end up you end up paying a lot for a build with a 5600g does fine it does fine like gets gets certain settings yeah but, you know it gets the job done it gets the job done all right so yeah we've got the antec d600 flux here for our case and we've got three extra rgb fans to add as well so that's all the main components here tonight. Very easy, no graphics card when you've got the 5600G. So let's have a quick look at this board. So this is obviously one of the one of the cheaper boards, being an A520 chipset motherboard. So I'll just have a quick look at it here. And see which way the plastic actually opens. Okay. Alrighty. So this is the board. Can you move that? Sorry. This is the board here. So as we can see here, it's it's a budget board, but not too budget. So we've got eight pins of CPU power there. We don't have any heat sinks on our MOSFET, VRM or co-processors. We've got an AM4 socket, CPU fan header. We've got dual channel memory here, two, so two slots, two channels. Um, we've got our 24 pin ATX power here for our motherboard. We have four SATA ports. We've got another fan header over here. We've got a USB 3.0 header. We've got, that's our front panel connections. We've got a clear CMOS header, a diagnostic speaker header, two USB 2.0s, these white ones. Then we've got a COM port header there, this, this one here. And we've got our trusted platform module header there for our Windows 11 chip. <laughs> oh, it's good fun, isn't it? So then we've also got two RGB headers. So even though this is a cheaper board, you do have addressable RGB on this motherboard, a five volt and a 12 volt header. And we've got our front panel audio header here for our speaker and microphone jack on the case. And around the back here, pretty basic IO, audio, gigabit ethernet, four USB 3.0s, two USB 2.0s, a PS2 port, and we have DVI and HDMI off the motherboard, and we have a Q flash button. 
And we'll just talk about quickly this stuff in the middle. We have fan header number three there. So we will need to use the fan controller included in this case for sure. We have, uh, we've got one M2 slot there with a little plastic connection there, which is, which is kind of uh, convenient. Probably doesn't look as nice, but it's definitely convenient. We've got our PCIe X16 slot and we've got two X1 slots here. And obviously under here is where our A520 chipset lives. And that's all the main features on this board. And so we get our usual, usual offenders in here. Our rear I.O. shield and some SATA cables. Just what we need. In the age of M2, in, in the age of M2 SSDs, SATA cables get less and less reused, basically. Okay. So all I need to do with this thing here is, plug is pre-installed. Just pull out a little plastic thing. We can slot in our M2 drive. Unfortunately, the position of the slot means that the drive will appear upside down. But take it from me, it, it's in there the right way. Alright, so all we've got to do now is get our CPU on the board and get our cooler installed. So we're going to have to change the mounting hardware there. So... My blue screwdriver's under your computer, babe. I saw it there. I saw it there. Oh, yeah, I see it. Yep. Uh -huh. Why is it on my computer? Because we're doing stuff with your computer. Alright, so we just need to remove the standard mounting brackets there. And we've got our AMD 5600G. So not a bad little piece of silicon, if I may say so myself. There we go. And so we get the Ryzen 5 and Radeon graphics stickers. That fancy that is. And so we've got a Wraith Stealth Cooler here. Pre-applied thermal compound. And shall put it down just like that. So what you want to do is, you just want to get two corner pieces slightly screwed in, yep, and then you can pretty easily get the others down. Just give all four just a couple of rotations to get them started. Then once you're certain that all four are tightened, or at least not, not fully tightened, but at least inside the nut there, then you can just go ahead and tighten down all of them completely. But if you don't get them all started, you'll tighten one down. It'll be very difficult to get the other bolts into alignment. So if you just start all of them off and get them started, then you can just go around and fully tighten them. And it'll get to a point where you just can't turn the screwdriver anymore. Okay, so... So 
So I just like to stash the cables away where possible. There we go. And so I've just sort of stashed it away. You can't even really see that excess cable there. I've just wrapped it around the feet there just to make use of that length. There we go, we've got our CPU installed and we've also got our GPU installed. You don't often hear me use the, the word GPU because that's not what a graphics card is. A lot of people call graphics cards GPUs, but the, the GPU is actually the, the little chip on the graphics card. So in the case of a chip, a CPU like this, it has a CPU and it has a GPU on the same chip. So that's why I can do the graphics. Alrighty, so that is actually our board prepped, believe it or not. So, oh no, RAM. it's not RAM. <laughs> I was gonna say, I'm like, mm, no, I'm not done yet. I, I'm, I'm like, I'm like tired tonight. So I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm rushing it. Like, well, maybe I am. That's why I forgot to put the RAM in. <laughs> No, you, well, the, the thing is, there goes a G-Skill sticker for you, babe. Uh, I'm putting all these on the bottom of She's the She's collecting G-Skill stickers. Yes. Well, nobody else uses them. <laughs> Somebody must. <laughs> we'll, we'll take a photo of our G-Skill fridge and we'll send it to G-Skill and we'll see if they send me some cool stuff. Some 4800 megahertz CL20 memory or something. Ooh, that that, that'd be cool. No, I'm dreaming, man. They won't give me stuff like that. <laughs> Alright, so go hard drive to install as well and we've got three case fans it's a bit quiet tonight is it yeah yeah we are starting a bit later see I think if if you don't start by a certain time certain other people will just they'll everyone just moves on with their night man you know, like no one's waiting for me. I don't expect people to wait for me. <laughs> like if if you if you like me that much, that's that's cool. I I, I appreciate you, but um, yeah, I don't expect that. <laughs> I'm not one of those guys. Oh, this is a gigabyte motherboard. I've got that. I've got that TPM oh, chip that, that yes. is the same pattern. Do you want to see if it works on this motherboard? Yes. So we we have a bit of fun. Yeah, let's do it. Where is no, it? That's not... It is. Give me that one. All right. Let's show everyone what this crap is because I don't think I've shown people on this channel what these are. So this here is a TPM 2.0 module. So this is the little chip that you need for Windows 11 to make your computer compatible. So if you've updated Windows recently and you've seen something about Windows 11 that says this computer is not compatible, this is the kind of thing that you need. So I can only find there is different ones. There's different pin, pin configurations and everything. Um, what I haven't tested before is a different brand TPM chip with the same pinout on a different brand motherboard. Um, I can't seem to find any real information about it online because this is sort of new to the masses. This is something that's sort of been in like desktop 
workstations and like mm. businesses and stuff like that, like places where they need extra security and stuff. It's not really been the sort of feature that consumers play around with too much. And because they're going into pretty like stock standard type builds, no one's really tinkering around with this sort of stuff. These, these go into computers and no one knows that they're there. No one plays around with them or does anything. So we're going to see whether this little guy works on the Gigabyte motherboard because this is an MSI branded one and it has, I believe, the same pin configuration. Oh no, it's, this board has, this board has a different pin configuration. Aww. It doesn't fit. Oh, fuck off. I thought it had the same one, but it doesn't. Why are you got me excited? I know, I know, I know. I thought it was, because it's, it's, it's the same one as my motherboard has. I've got a Gigabyte motherboard in my rig. Well, maybe you should do a video tomorrow with your PC. Yeah, we'll have a play around with it. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in mine, I'll see if it works, and then if it works, I'll make a video on it. If not, it'll be a pretty boring video of me going, oh, so I'm going to try this, and oh, so that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Quick videos. <laughs> okay, so you get, you get like, you get this reverse fan that you can put in, like, to blow, like, cool air onto the bottom of your graphics card, but it's not really essential, but this case does have the capacity to mount two fans to the bottom below the graphics card there, so you can put two 120mm fans in there, mm -hmm. and because of the back panel here, you see you've got that grate on the bottom, so it actually can draw cool air in through the back panel there, and that's where those where those fans on the bottom there draw their air from. I like that, Robbie. Robbie says, late night show, Tim. Yes, yes. yes. Um, I'm probably not as good as, as Colbert, but <laughs> I can, I can, I, I can give it, I can give it a go. You know, do you know what I actually really liked? I don't know if anyone watches The Daily Show or anything like that, um, but I, I really enjoyed the, the COVID lockdown episodes yes. with, with him yes. because because he didn't he wasn't he wasn't distracted by the studio. It was just him. And, and like the, 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 the and people, his wife sometimes and yeah, and and the and the producer and the, the yeah. people who make the show with him and stuff, um, all the all the main people you get on the webcam with like John Baptiste. Sorry, the, have you watched the, his new uh, stuff since he's been yeah. back on set? He's he's adopted some of the stuff that he's like used. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of that some of that stuff's continuing on. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yeah, it really, it, re it, it really was, it was, it was good, it was good. Alright, just got our hard drive mounted and slotted into the tray. So I might just put the power supply in, get that out of the way. And then we've got that usual crap to deal with, with the tied up cables. This one actually looks a lot better than normal. Come and have a look at this. This one was made on Monday morning by the new guy. Hey, he like did, he still it didn't, like he still didn't tie them up like properly. But, but he did it, he did Hi. it better, better than usual, better than just oh, like, I don't like that. yeah, no, 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 it's, it's like I said, it's the not, cables it's, in the bow. yeah, yeah, no, it's I'll not, do that. yeah, you, yeah. you, you want to undo them, that'd be awesome, that's one of those really annoying jobs with this case, they use all these little ties, and I use like one cable tie, and I make it like, 
all this in one line. This one's a really neat bow. Check that. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. You see in this, right? It's not yeah, just me. No. All right. So this is semi-modular power supply. So we've got. Maybe a girl did this one. Yeah. That's what. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> So, so we've got a CPU power and a motherboard power cable that are permanently attached. And then all the other cables here are optional. So we actually only need, out of, out of all of these, we only need one other cable. I don't like how the cables are like folded over and crinkled. Yeah, but, yeah, but you just bend them out. That's fine. Yeah, but it's so crinkly. <laughs> like that. Alright, so what we're gonna do, so yeah Philip, I'm gonna I'm gonna tie a heap of these cables back in a bunch with a zip tie around them and you can plug these in when it's time for your graphics card oh, updates. So You'll, you'll see the ones that say PCIe on them. You'll see it in big big letters written on it. They're the ones for your graphics card. They're the only cables in the bunch that have a word written on them. So you pretty much pretty much can't go wrong with that. What's wrong now, babe? No, 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 no. I'm just like at the way that they've twisted things around. Oh, this one's really neat. It's almost sacrilege time to do it. It looks really nice. There's little bow and everything. You know she was probably disciplined for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it took too long. Yeah, yeah. She was probably like, is this good? Oh, is this it could good? have been her first day. She's like, oh look, I'm really trying. I don't care. You work fast or you re you get replaced. <laughs> yeah. It's made in China, right? Mm hmm Like... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven twist ties. Is that more than normal? No, that's about right. Oh, I might want to actually just plug this cable in. It's generally easier. Plug it in first. Should I unplug these things from that? No, nah, leave them plugged in. That's fine. You can you can just straighten them out. Just um, so. Well, I've. See oh, see see how you see how see how all these cables come from the same direction. Yeah. So just like, see the see the tie down point up there. Like just just rip them off. Just put a zip tie, one zip tie around a heap a bunch of them, and then just stuff the excess cables back inside. Oh. So run them, run them up. Yeah, yeah. 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 I am already prepared. So yeah, we'll get that sorted, got that one hard drive, happy days, got a few fans to screw in up the top.
with the other the other the other piece there. I mean, you can just cut it off. You don't really have to, though. No, this piece. Is that what you're talking about? Oh no. Well, yeah, you can cut them off. Um, I don't think so. I think you stole my. Oh no! Here we go. You normally steal my scissors. Okay, so I've just stashed all those excess cables down there with the power supply. And we've got some RGB fans. These are 5 volt addressable RGB fans. these fans in and we'll be sorted. Cable Guy. Christine hasn't seen that movie. something. Oh. Like it's, well, it's, it's was cool. it was it's <laughs> old. It's an older older movie. Okay, so we're gonna have plenty of fan headers here. So um what are we gonna do with this? Um yeah I'll probably route I'll probably route that header there in the middle of the board, I'll use because this won't be long. Oh, no, this might be long enough. We might be able to do this. So we'll route our cable around here if we've got any room. We've got room to slide in between those capacitors and the cooler. And I just slide, slide on in. Yes. Let's do this very carefully without breaking anything. Tim. Yeah. Says close. Tim. Google says 96. Ah, 96. Okay. Yeah, well, well, well like 96, 94. It's, it's the 90s, man. Okay, so we've got that cable there, sort of discreetly routed behind that in between the cooler there. At the back there. Just sort of slid that in place there. You just gotta be very careful doing doing stuff like that because I mean on on um on most motherboards it's very easy to damage a capacitor. And see now, I've just got that in a better position there, babe. See that? See, it's just hidden mm. down below there. Because you don't really want, you don't really want anything resting or putting pressure on the capacitors. Mm. You want like air to easily move around there. Like that cable touching it on the side there. That's not, that's not an issue. That's not going to cause any significant problem. But you don't want you don't want any pressure or cables pressing down on those capacitors. So, mm, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it, it, it did, did well. Yeah, well, it's 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 Jim Jim Carrey. Yeah. 
We looked it up. Didn't, didn't it's, it is Jim Carrey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And you're like, oh, it's a Jim, Jim Carrey. I like Jim Carrey movies. Yeah. You're like, how come I've never I'd, seen this? I thought I'd seen like pretty much all his movies. <laughs> okay. So we're chucking three RGB fans here up top in the exhaust position. So that means the front of the fans will be facing down. So all we've got is just a dust filter on the top there. And all I need to do is just make sure these cables are going in the right direction here, which is towards the back of our case. I don't care about the excess cable, I just need So with, with this particular case, you've got just enough room for 360 millimeter radiators and, th and three 120 millimeter fans. Obviously three 120 millimeter fans is one 360 millimeter radiator for the most part in terms of the area where it's mounted is. Sometimes a radiator will be bigger than a 360 millimeter radiator might have larger dimensions than 360 millimeters because they're talking about the the dimensions of the part that screws to the case. How's this looking for our motherboard? We'll have some offsets to adjust. We've got a standard 6. And we have four of those 6 in place.
Alrighty. Alright, so I've got two bolts in each of the fans now, so now it's nice and easy to do the others up. Could have used shorter bolts here. It's quite a few, but quite a few um, revolutions to screw these screws completely in. It certainly ain't going anywhere once they're in there. We're nearly there, nearly home. couple more offsets in the motherboard so we can actually screw down our oh, sorry I think I said let's put another couple of bolts in our motherboard let's put another couple of bolts in our case so we can screw down our motherboard I'm just dyslexic Okay. Okay, and we had a dust filter for the top there. All right. So that's all looking pretty good. I'm just going to put two bolts in the top because I'm going to run a couple of cables behind the board just to keep things nice and neat. OK. 
Okay. So we had USB 3 was down the bottom, wasn't it? Yeah. So there's, we're not going to be running that one behind the board. That can actually just come out through there and stay there for now, out of my way. And then I've got a front panel audio. One cable going into the motherboard from the bottom there is okay, right? connections so we're not using the addressable we're not using the um, RGB controller like with a case control so we're actually going to plug the the button on the case that says um, RGB we're going to plug that into the reset switch so we'll have a reset power button on the case not a reset um, a reset an LED button because people generally prefer to be able to control the lighting with the software on their computer and because we have the addressable headers here on the motherboard for it we may as well use it all right so that is all looking good back there so We've got another cable we've got to run down the back of our motherboard as well. And this one is our RGB cable. So we'll run this one straight down here. And it just plugs in there. Alrighty, so that's looking pretty good. So now we can plug, we can plug some fans into into here into this splitter. All right, that's an RGB. That's a fan.
go. Now we're left with one, just one other fan. And there we go. And then we need a few other RGB. So we can plug these into our controller. Jeez, they're not going to come out. That's tight fitting RGB plug right there. Oh, jeez. That's not coming out. Okay. So we've got all of our small cables all plugged in now. So now we can turn our attention to these bigger ones and then just tying everything down at the back and we'll be good to go so Philip will be able to look at this as a as a bit of a blank slate because you can do a lot more with this rig in its current form Plug our RGB and fan controller into side of power. We'll plug some side of power into our hard drive. Okay, looking pretty good. Do I have a SATA cable? So where are our SATA ports? What can we do about this? Can we do something about this? I think we can do something about this. Look at that.
Okay. And so that side of cable will plug into our hard drive. So that is, believe it or not, that is our build. That is all done. So we've got three RGB fans on the top, three RGB fans on the front, and then everything else is hooked up as discreetly as possible. So now it's time to see if she works. So on this PC we will be plugging in to the motherboard because that is our graphics. I feel like I haven't installed Windows for a while. Okay, so let's give it a go. Okay. What's the matter? Still not giving me anything. Everything's plugged in right. Okay, so all right. So before we do anything drastic, we're just going to reseat the memory. Try again just with one stick here. Behavior seems exactly the same. Let's try the other stick in the other slot. No. 
No. Oh, that's fucking annoying. All right, so what is most likely wrong here with this one is the fact that I don't have the latest BIOS update on this board, I don't think. We are compatible with 5000G. say this is a BIOS related thing. Call it a BIOS related illness. Carefully put this CPU down right there and wipe off the thermal compound so I don't get it everywhere. And we're going to chuck in a Ryzen 3300X. Pikachu. Alright, so for for our purposes here, I am let's just wipe off a bit of a bit of hair on the end of that. I'm just gonna use this piece of an Intel stock cooler. And I'm just gonna put a little drop of thermal compound down. And I'm just gonna stick that over my 3300X here. We'll just give it a move around here on the block so you get that nice little dollop spread out. Making good contact. There we go. Happy days. So we've got our ad hoc CPU in place there. Let's put the rest of our memory back in. So I don't think the memory is the problem. And before we do anything else, where is it? Here's my SSD. So we got a Gigabyte A520MH. Let us, let us look that up. Sorry, I'm going to stare at the back of my head now. Sweet. 
Yeah, uh, copy that. Okay. So let's give this a whirl. Oh, pff. stop that, stop that. Cut, 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 cut. Now, 3300X isn't going to work very well without some sort of a graphics card, considering it is a CPU only chip. So we're going to chuck this graphics card in. This is our trusty GT710 with the four HDMI outputs and a PCIe X1 interface. So we can plug it into the one of the little tiny baby PCIe ports. And provided our motherboard BIOS isn't doing anything weird with it, it'll work just fine. So let's just swap our HDMI cable over to our GT710 there and let's continue And what have we got? Nothing here as well. Really? Let's just clear the CMOS. Is it not outputting to that X1 slot? See, sometimes a motherboard, if you plug a graphics card into an X1 slot, it doesn't want to output the main display on to that card. Let's let's try it. Let's try it in the main X16 slot there, just to make sure there's nothing weird going on with the BIOS. Because sometimes it'll only want to output to one display. And see, so this is why sometimes building your own computer isn't really worth it. Because if you don't have all this stuff lying around to do this, it comes a very, very, very tedious process. You'll spend all this time putting it together and then you'll find out you can't use it and you've got to take it back to where you bought it from to, for them to update the BIOS for you or do something. It can quickly be not worth your time. <laughs> All right, attempt six.
no diagnostic lights on the board. So if I can't get a signal now, Okay, so there's still nothing. So I'm going to plug in this diagnostic speaker. And see if that can shed any light on what our situation is here. Very strange, we're not getting anything from that speaker. CPU is getting a little bit warm, but we're not even getting we're not even getting to the point where we get post beeps. So we have to isolate our problem. So one thing you might want to do if you if you've got a board like this, no post indicators or anything like that. So the first thing I'd suggest is unplug SATA and USB and also your front panel connections. So I've also unplugged the RAM here and I'm going to plug the diagnostic speaker back in. Okay. So let's fire it up now so we don't have any memory in it. Oh, sorry. I removed the front panel connectors. Nothing. All or nothing.
Okay, so now all we've got plugged in is our M2 drive, our CPU, our CPU power, and our motherboard power, and the diagnostic speaker. Still nothing. So it's looking like it's looking like a dead motherboard. Okay, so let's let's try it. One stick of memory, the diagnostic speaker should also unplug all of our peripherals as well. Just to be extra sure. So we've got basically nothing plugged into this motherboard. There's a CPU, there's the motherboard power cable, and there's the CPU power cable and the diagnostic speaker. And obviously our graphics card in the display port, display output. Oh, there we go. Look at that. So I wonder what was causing that. Okay, so when you get a post when you've had problems getting it to boot like this, then it's a process of working out what you actually disconnected that was the problem. So it could have been a bad connection on a USB, like on the keyboard and mouse. It could be one of these cables and stuff. Um, I've taken the quick option by not testing each individual device as I unplug them. If you want to do it really thorough and efficiently, you could do it like that, but I, I generally I like to use a bit of my instinct on it, so I'm sort of like, okay, what are the chances of this being causing a problem? If it's pretty low, I'm not really too concerned about it. I'll just unplug it. I'm not going to bother te testing it. That'll be one of the things I check when we get further down the list of, of possibilities. But I have, I've got reason to, to think right now that there's nothing wrong with any of the stuff from the bottom of the motherboard here. So we can just go and plug all that stuff straight back in. I checked all of the things that frequently cause problems at first. They didn't, they weren't apparently the problem. So I'm going to plug all that stuff back in. And we're going to do, we're going to do the BIOS update 
just to be extra extra sure that when we plug in our actual CPU that it's going to work. So we don't want to waste any more time. It's getting late. Okay. <sighs> Someone said, well done. I think it was a bit, um, I think that might have been a bit premature. Back to no posts now. Yeah. Not doing too well here. Is this board not like them on keyboard and mouse, maybe?
Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get a bit frustrated here because I'm going around in circles. Hmm, what is the go here? I'm not buying that it's a bad motherboard because... Nothing. Just not playing ball for me. Mm. There's something wrong with the motherboard, maybe. Potentially. But it posted once for me when I had a heap of stuff disconnected. It's just been really inconsistent.
Andre said, well done. I was like, yeah, it's a little bit premature, I think. <laughs> Second CPU here. Oh. Yep. So like we are Are the fans on the front meant to be spinning? Oh no, they're on plug. Oh okay. It is actually on. I've just got everything unplugged from the power yeah, I supply. Can see the, the top fan spinning. The, the top fan the spinning. Room. There we go. We got something then. Yay! Let's. Ew, that looks a little. What? Oh, the BIOS screen looked like pixelated. Oh. It's probably. Hold. Okay. Didn't like that second stick. I think it's bad memory from from this because obviously I just pulled the stick out. So yeah. Andrea said shit happens, I trust you. <laughs> yeah, shit definitely happens. Hey Mick, how you going? Nick. Oh Nick. Sorry Nick. Anything from that. 
So have we got a bad stick or have we got a bad slot? That is the question. Okay, it's, that's not looking good for, for this stick. I'll have to get another kit of memory and chuck it in. Grab the stuff on my test bench. It's, it's turned on. Yeah, I was going to turn We've got a post there. Alright. So, I'm going to. I'm going to go plug in everything again for the last time. Do you want to do you want to test this stim? Take out take out the Trident Z and see if you can get that to post. Which one do I put in? Oh, anyone, it'll be fine. slot. It could be a slot alarm. like a dead stick. G skills letting us down. Letting me down man, you're letting me down. No deal. No. Alrighty. Well, check that there. You don't get to keep this RAM. Sorry. I don't think he really wants it anyway. 
no, no, no. Oh, the, the, oh, this, that this, one. this RAM that oh. I'm plugging into it. I'm just like, you know, I get to keep this stuff. I thought you were talking about the other stuff. This is from the test bench. Alright, so. Tim? Yeah. The old. He means his two eight yeah, it should be fine. Okay, we got post. Oh, just freaking go to BIOS, man. We don't have an operating system. Go to BIOS. Ugh, sorry about that. Bit of fun for you. But you can't rule anything out. It could be anything. And where am I? We'll go down to Q Flash. We'll update the BIOS. And we have version F1. <laughs> oh, shit. And we're going to 14D. So just a couple of, a couple of updates here for, for this motherboard. Alright. Well, so I'm an old man, I gotta go take my pills. Okay, nearly done with this BIOS update.
Alrighty, so our BIOS is updated now. So maybe we can go back to something that resembles our actual configuration. That might be kind of cool. So thank you GT710 for your service. World's most hated graphics card. But it can still get a bit of love here at Tim's PC. It's a good card when you use it for what it's good for. bolts back here on these blanking panels. Screw these back in place. Okay. So we can go ahead and remove the stock cooler there and we can put our 3300X back in that CPU tray there. And then we can take our Ryzen 5600G, place it back in the socket, and what we might do is, because we've got a heap of these, um, I might just go ahead and open a new one. So it's a little bit awkward when you've got to change the CPU and change it back. This box should work fine. There we go, so the back panel's resting on that box there, which will make it easier for me to screw the CPU in. Let's get that cable positioned the way that I want it.
Alrighty. Okay, now we've got our original CPU installed, we've got everything else all hooked up, all I have to do is plug in our HDMI cable and we should be able to finish this one off tonight. Just have to swap the memory over, get a new kit tomorrow. Let me swap this controller over to motherboard control. Jesse asks what would happen if electricity goes out during a BIOS update. Um, well, for me, nothing, because I've got a UPS installed for all this. So if I'm doing a BIOS update, we get a blackout. The computer it's running is just going to keep running. Alrighty. Alright, BIOS has been reset. I'm just going to enable that XMP. Save and exit. But yes, if you're doing a BIOS update and power goes out, you'll brick your motherboard. Yeah. 
you would have to manually reflash the BIOS chip. So you, it requires you desoldering a little tiny chip off the motherboard, connecting it to your own circuitry and manually flash. So manually put a particular electrical signal through that chip again and then you might be able to repair it. So in general it's not worth the labor cost to do that. So if you if your BIOS if you if you lose power while you're doing a BIOS update, your motherboard's gone. It's not a service that I offer people repairing um, motherboards like that. Okay, well, now that we've got that installed, I can plug in the hard drive and then I can actually put the back panel on this case. So if you're wondering why it's yellow, that's the default colour for Gigabyte. Okay, let's smash this out. Make up for lost time here.
Alright, just a second, the stream's going to cut out for just a second. Alrighty, so we should be back now. Okay, let's sort all this out. down some custom desktop icons so we don't make a mess of the place okay so we've got a WD hard drive so we'll install, install a Cronus true image for Western Digital uh, no 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 app center What's up? Huh? You wanted the Chokito. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, don't need anything from Chrome. Our display, which you should be able to see. Yep.
PLC. Steam. I think she's decided to crash on me. After all, after all I've been through tonight. How much longer am I going to deal with this for? I reckon I've only got about a second or so left of patience. Okay. So what did we get?
Ah, look at that. Perfect timing. Alright, let's turn off all that annoying shit that starts up automatically. There we go. So these can be updated here. And that's, we've just got our hard drive to set up. And that's pretty much it.
go. All sorted. There's our one terabyte hard drive. Sweet as sweet. Okay, so we should be we should be all good to go now. Let's get these cumulative updates installed. And then, yeah, I think I might leave it there for the night. I'm getting pretty tired, to be honest. So, if you want to see how 5600G goes in gaming, just look back um, on a 5600G not too long ago, so just look back at that video and you can see the gaming Pretty much it for the night, I think. Oh no, I'll I might I'll put in the I'll put in their Windows code so I don't forget.
go. Windows is activated. Alrighty. Well, that was a bit of a drama, but we got there in the end. So I think I might leave it leave it there for tonight because like I said I'm pretty tired at this stage. So thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and I'll catch you all in the next video.